thank you for taking the time out for this session. I want to quickly understand how many of you are familiar with Buy Now, Pay Later. Show of hands. So my job is done here. But this session is really, I want you to walk, around, walk out of here with a couple of key points. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of Buy Now, Pay Later, where it came from. We're going to talk a little bit about how we truly empower the industry and talk about true value. There are a lot of different opinions in the, in the market and in, in the media about Buy Now, Pay Later, and I'll try and cut through to the chase. And then finally, we'll also see how it's become so hyped up globally and in the Middle East. And we'll talk about some of the tailwinds and some of the reasons why this has happened. And then finally, with every hyped up industry, there's always the big question, which is what's next? And so hopefully I'll be able to cover a little bit of that and we'll take it from there. So buy now, pay later has always existed in one shape or, an or another. And so if you look back in time, you had um, a very simple example, furniture companies that would sell things in installments and you would pay in higher purchase. How many of you have heard of higher purchase in the past or installments? Uh, that you used to go and do long forms to check out. No show of hands, but I'm guessing I saw some nods. And, um, and so it's always existed, but it was really digitized for the first time by one of the companies called Affirm. Affirm is a US company started by Max Levchin, one of the PayPal founders. And he digitized this, or his company digitized this. They brought it online. And they didn't only bring it online, they made it instant. So everything was totally digitized. The KYC was digi digitized. And it was the first transition to buy now, pay later. At the same time, we had Klarna, who had a specific type product in Scandinavia, albeit a very different culture and a different product. What they were doing was giving a pay in X days. So something called Faktura. I don't know if you're familiar with invoice financing, but in Sweden, which is a very different culture from the US and from here and from Africa, you'd be able to pay for your product at the end of the month. They'll send you a bill, and, it'll and you can go and pay it afterwards. So you could shop at H&M and pay it at the end of the month. Klarna digitized this, and this was the birth of the second type of buy now, pay later. We'll go and focus really on the third type. So in 2014, Nick and Ant from Afterpay, and I'm not just saying that they, they are the ones who really transformed this industry because they are an investor, but also because I truly believe that this is the time that really flipped everything and we started to hear about Buy Now, Pay Later. So in 2014, this company called Afterpay in Australia took the model and turned it on its head. What did they do? They moved, they shifted the fees away from the customers to the retailers. From the customers, and I'll get into this a little bit more in detail, but what happened is there was huge adoption. If you want something to be successful today, I would strongly su suggest it's free because the customers prefer free things, it was transparent, and it was absolutely seamless to use. And this stimulated a huge amount of change in the buy now, pay later sector. This is where it was born. So if you, look at it, if you look at it as a game of risk, everyone knows what risk is. It's the big map of the world where you're fighting for different parts and countries. This is what happened in 2014, 2016, sorry, you started to see a hype up of the buy now, pay later sector. We started to see Klarna move into the US with Australia, and it started to become a, a huge land grab. And so this is the start of Buy Now, Pay Later. The adoption was huge. Customers loved it. Investors started getting more, in, more interested in it. And so, sorry. And, and in Postpay launched in MIA. We launched in 2019. We were the, one of the first Buy Now, Pay Laters here. And you know, I'll talk a little bit about how it started very quickly, but there was a lot of pushback from retailers. There was EAP. How many bankers do we have in the room? <laughs> You're not a banker. And so EPP, EMI, anyone heard of this? This is installment financing when you check out online using your credit or debit card. So there was always a lot of pushback in the industry in the, in, in the, in the MENA region because they didn't see the value for BNPL. What happened was really interesting, and I'll get into that, and I'll talk about how it really shifted, both behaviorally for customers and for merchants as well. But let's talk about the value. So how have we empowered our customers? Um, and I can talk about the flows, et cetera, et cetera, but at the core of it, 
we shifted all the costs away from the customer, so there's no interest and there are no fees. Do people understand what Buy Now, Pay Later is? Shall I explain that for a second? A customer will check out online, and instead of using a normal payment method, they'll use Postpay, for example. And they'll enter their credit or debit card details. It's totally bank agnostic. It's totally card agnostic. You enter your Emirates ID, your card details, and obviously you have to do an OTP on your phone number. So it's a very light KYC. We charge the first third up front. The second third is scheduled in one month, and the third installment is scheduled on the second month. It's a very good balance of time. Customers don't have to do anything after that. There's zero interest, zero fees. So if I'm buying a pair of sneakers for 300 dirhams, if I, at the end of the day, I'm going to be paying 300 dirhams. The cost of this financing, the cost of the payments, the cost of all of this is shifted to the retailers who are happy to pay for this. And I'll tell you why in a second. So it's an absolute instant process where they do it online. There's no long forms. There's no sign up. And most of all, one thing that we've been able to really empower our customers with is promoting responsible spending. And this is the core and the purpose of what we do. It's driven from a need to empower the customers without fees, without hidden fees. We have written off as a company over 35% of all the late fees that we charge the customers. We're not regulated by Basel III. We can't disperse cash that we don't have, which means that we're only successful when our customers pay us back. Now, this alignment between us and the customer and the retailer creates true value in the industry. For merchants, we've obviously been, been able to boost conversion and AOVs, and this is proven across the retailers that we work with in various different segments. You're talking between 50 and 100% uplift in AOVs, average order values, on, in furniture companies. Conversion rate is driven by two main factors. The first one is because we obviously are creating a situation where the customer is more likely to check out because they can split it in three installments, meaning their perceived affordability increases. Now, this is great as a budgeting tool, and it increases the conversion. So those of you in e-commerce would know that it's really one of the biggest challenges is to lift those conversion rates. The second thing we do from the, the conversion rate is, and now becoming even more important, I don't think it's, I don't, I think it's fair to say that there are millions of customers, or at least a million customers in the region who have used Buy Now Pay Later to date. This is, a, <laughs> this is an industry that hasn't, is not more than two years old. The uptake has been enormous. Now, when you have this size of a customer base, you're also able to direct a lot of these customers to different merchants, and that's really powerful. So we started off as a payment method, and we've moved into a marketing powerhouse as well. And then finally, I mean, secondly, we increase return customer rates. So our customers are sticky. We have KYC customers who are targeted. We know exactly what they want. We have a lot of data. We're data-driven. I'm not going to go into that too much. But the return customer rate that we see is between 35 to 40% from Postpay, our own customers. This is across the industry. They're really sticky customers. And finally, the retailers get, uh, get paid up front with no risk. So the customer receives their product immediately. We pay the merchant up front, and we schedule payments, and we take all the risk. So it's an absolute win-win, win-win-win. What drove the success of BNPL and MENA? So there are a couple of key factors here. And you OK? There are a couple of key factors here. So the first one is the tailwinds and the customer behavior. I don't want to go on and on about COVID, because <laughs> I think we've seen it all. But we set up, and we had our first transaction January 2020 just before COVID hit. And one of the first things that happened, when we were talking to retailers in 2020, there was a huge amount of conversation around solving for cash and delivery. Why are you introducing buy now, pay later? You should be solving for cash and delivery. And one of the most in interesting shifts was the drastic, drastic change in the region in 2020, in March, April, where we had a huge shift to online, online transactions. We were all pushed over the line. So that was the first tailwind. The second one was obviously uncertainty, and I don't like to use the word, but there was a lot more uncertainty for everyone. So there was a little bit more focus on budgeting, focus on leveling out that cash and making the most out of it. 
And so that, together with obviously the obvious consistent rise in prices and affordability issues, was the first mover and the, the tailwind. The growing and aligned e-commerce sector, obviously everyone moved online, SMBs, large players. We had a sudden influx. We had thousands of small e-commerce merchants. We had big, large conglomerates shifting into e-commerce. And they were moving into e-commerce, which meant that these were digitally first retailers. They were looking at digital first, meaning that they were open to new things. They were, they were tech savvy. And they were more acceptable to alternative types of payments. And that's another really strong point. Initially, very hard to crack into them, but now every retailer sees by now pay later and knows it. And I think that's a great, great um, end result. And finally, the, there was a massive global investment in, uh, in BNPL. Every, everybody was setting up a BNPL at some point. It mushroomed around the world. And you had several companies listing on the ASX at 200, 150 million dollars um, market cap. And so there was strong investor sentiment that also drove this. And you'll see it even through today. I think one of the, and a lot of our, my, our colleagues or my colleagues, my peers spoke today about fintech and banks, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's important to say that BNPL is moving into a very positive direction. You'll see even locally, we were able to bring a bank on board for financing, which tells you how important it is. So what's next for Buy Now, Pay Later? So we have seen Buy Now, Pay Later in its first form. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with payments, but you, we've really looked at just the acquiring side. We haven't even touched on issuing. I believe that Buy Now, Pay Later is moving to BNPL 2.0. And we launched one of the first issuing products in the region, which is a huge challenger to a number of alternative finances or alternative cards. I, I don't want to say credit card. It's a buy now, pay later card that is open everywhere. So I'll talk about the shopping app first. We have a shopping app, and this is not something that we came up with. This is a, this is a product that exists elsewhere as well. We can now unlock buy now, pay later anywhere. We don't have to sign up with merchants at all. And we can respond to customers immediately. If a customer wants a retailer, we can switch it on. That's extremely powerful for us and for the customer. And we can also use this then to work with retailers and see how we can further integrate it. And this is the shopping app. And there's end levels of detail that we can get into. The second is on in-store. The e-commerce market is arguably around $30 billion, growing at 20, 16 to 26%, depending on where you're looking. This is in the GCC. When you look at the, the, the retail market, it's about $300 billion in the GCC. We live in a culture, a mall culture. It's, it's really hard, about four to six months, depending on where you are. And so we're driven into the malls. We have some of the best experiences in store. By far, some of the best experiences in store. And this is the next opportunity for Buy Now, Pay Later. And finally, we're looking at long-term installments. So bridging the gap between where banks don't want to play because it's, it's not interesting for them from a financing perspective and from where we're willing to go up to or able to go up to in certain countries. So you're looking at a five to 50,000 dirham or SAR uh, range, very interesting verticals that we'll tap into as well. And this is starting to become more prevalent across the globe. I think Buy Now Pay Later has been an ancillary product. We were a company that was built on one product, but it's safe to say that it's here to stay, and we're building a whole portfolio of, uh, of products around it. And you know, it gives us a lot of pride when the likes of Goldman Sachs, Apple, um, MasterCard, Visa, start announcing that they have Buy Now Pay Later uh, products as well. So as a, as a FinTech born out, born out of this country, and growing in the Middle East, um, you know, we see a very bright future for Buy Now, Pay Later. And I think there's going to be a lot of very interesting things coming from Buy Now, Pay Later in the future. I'll be taking all questions offline. So please come out and reach, us, reach out to me or any of my colleagues. Happy to discuss the industry. Happy to discuss um, some of the movements. I'm sure a lot of you have questions around many different topics that I could explain. 
Uh, thank you very much for your time.